I'm uh, Adrian Burton and uh, here today to talk to you about the ARDC Open Call for Projects and in particular two programs uh, in that call, uh, Transformative Data Collections and the Institutional Role in a Data Commons. Get down to our content. Uh, to get straight to the concrete of what are we talking about? It's an open call for projects in these two areas, one area called transformational collections and another area called role of an institution in a data commons. We're very practical, uh, we're offering uh, up to $50,000 per project. The project should be completed in September. Uh, we're open right now for uh, applications and that will close on the 1st of May. In total, we'll be investing about $2.1 million in this, in uh, it's available for the call. Uh, the spirit of the call is uh, short, as you can see, you know, two to three month projects perhaps, uh, to do something in these two areas and for us to learn from that and share those learnings. And I'll get back to more details about what that means. That will infer, uh, anyway, they will inform our future directions and we've got some summits and other kind of round tables and, and meetings uh, further in the year. So that's, in a nutshell, we're, what we're talking about. Uh, perhaps we should get a little bit of the context. Uh, let me just remind you that these slides were, and this recording will also be shared uh, at the, uh, after the, the uh, presentation. Uh, as well as the questions will be formally shared on our um, FAQ. The context for uh, this program of work is the context of the ARDC activities over the last year and, and moving into next year. So uh, up the top there you can see uh, last, at the end of last year we were very active in uh, a whole set of um, public consultation and uh, a lot of you on the um, call today, we we're probably involved in some of that public consultation. We went to each of the state capitals, we interviewed some of the big uh, national research infrastructure facilities, uh, we did a lot of uh, outreach there to get feedback from the community about some of the strategic directions of the ARDC. Those who are watching our website, and I, I encourage you all to do that, uh, will have seen in the, just in the last week or so we've posted an, uh, a number of um, documents that outline uh, some of those strategic directions. Uh, so that's what we've been doing over the last couple of months is clarifying those strategic directions with our board, with the department, uh, some of those high, the high level strategy. But that's now uh, settled in that sense and on, uh, on our website and we will be consulting further of, of course and refining that uh, as part of continuous improvement However, having uh, established those directions now, we're thinking about uh, if you look at the purple box that says in quarter one, here we are, we've done the strategic directions. We think that the new programs will start later in 2019 and then into uh, the outer years. Between here and there, we've got two pieces of work that we want to do, these discovery activities and a set of summits. So, uh, the discovery activities are projects like the ones that we're talking about today that uh, answer questions or stimulate activity in areas that we want new programs in and we want your experience or feedback or some examples and that's why we're doing these discovery activities. So they're meant to be small, lots, inclusive uh, to get uh, our partners and stakeholders involved in uh, developing our new programs, uh, the bigger and larger substantial pieces of work that will begin at the, towards the end of this year. After the discovery activities, we want to bring people together in a number of summits or um, roundtables or events to uh, discuss some of those dis uh, directions. Uh, and all that leading to those new programs that obviously will kick off towards the end of this year and into the uh, business plans of the coming years. Just a little note, uh, underneath there at the bottom, you can see whilst all this new stuff is going on, we are, we are committed to service continuity. So all the um, events and support and uh, services, infrastructure, 
that you've been accustomed to receive from uh, ARDC and its predecessor organizations are continuing those on, refining them in, in light of the strategic direction and uh, they will, you know, uh, so we can continue to do stuff in the meantime and they will benefit obviously from uh, this consultation and support the new programs uh, into the future as well. All right. So just to now have a look at what those strategic directions are, so this is all part of the background to these projects that we're talking about today. Uh, I'd encourage you to have a look at our website and look at the, uh, some of those strategy documents. In a nutshell, uh, the ARDC is transforming digital infrastructure to support leading edge research. We have a number of uh, strategic themes, uh, areas of activity, uh, data and services, storage and compute, coordination and coherence, software and platforms, people and policy. And together we're trying to work with the, the whole sector to, to build Australia's research data commons, which is again much bigger than um, any of our own activities and involves the whole sector, obviously. So that's in a nutshell what those strategic directions were about. Uh, and there's more detail on our website. So given those strategic directions, now what, what are the particular discovery activities that, that, that we're thinking of? For the moment, we have uh, two confirmed sort of portfolios and, and uh, a set of others that, we're, that are under consideration. So the first one, yeah, these data and services, that's what we're here talking about today. You will have seen uh, there's a computer and storage set of uh, discovery activities which really focuses in on 11 question area areas and we're considering other discovery activities in the other areas of that uh, strategy that we talked about there. So software and platforms, coordination, cohesion, people, policy and other stuff. So the first one is what is the subject matter of today's um, webinar. Uh, if you're also interested in compute and storage, then come back for another webinar on the 18th of April. And if you're interested in any of the other areas, then stay tuned and uh, I'll give you some ways of keeping in touch uh, at the end of this presentation. But don't tune out now. This is the, the key activity for now is this uh, data and services. Um, step back slightly. So why, you know, why, you know, why did data and you know, uh, figure so prominently in the strategic directions of the ARDC, we see that it is a key way for us to really benefit the whole research system because we are a national infrastructure provider in two ways. Um, can increase research innovation through these significant data collections that, that drive new research you know, over the next decade. Um, so for example, a, a longitudinal um, study or, in a particular discipline area could, could actually be the, the, the powerhouse of research, research innovation uh, for a number of years to come. Sort of that key role that we see data being able to play at a, a national system level is around research innovation. It's also uh, improving this idea of research integrity. So how would I, how would I reproduce the, the findings or the conclusions? How would I test or see for myself or adapt the conclusions of, uh, of um, previous research? Uh, and for that, we think you know, a pervasive sector-wide data arrangements that, that ensure the persistence of all the things that underpin journal articles and other, other um, research findings, that is a, a, a very a good contribution that data can make to the whole the national research system. So that's just just to you know step right back as to you know why we're doing this within the context of the, the research system and you should keep that in mind that that's our over, overall goal for those long-term activities and the two programs we have today actually line up with those uh, longer term objectives. All right, so let's talk about those. So now that was all background. I'm now going to give you more details about the probably why you've come here today, but uh, that's part of why we have a webinar to give you an idea of all the stuff that you don't see on the page uh, on the website. 
So the first program is called Transformative Collections. Um, what are we trying to do here? We're trying to help to either establish or develop or improve the sustainability of an existing significant data collection. And as we said, these are the kind of collections that will drive innovation in uh, Australian research. What is, a, what is this category of these transformative collections? Um, and why is ARDC again interested? Um, these are the kind of collections that enjoy strong community support. They have a scope which is clearly beyond a single institution and it's very clear that they drive and enable uh, research. This is obviously not all the data in Australia. It's a, it's a particular category that we're focusing in on for those tr strategic objectives that I talked about before. Now, uh, why you know, those three things are important. Uh, if they don't enjoy strong community support, then you know, we're not going to be interested if the community is not. If they're not uh, clearly beyond the single institution, then that's not national infrastructure. So although it's very important, that, that would come into a a different uh, kind of infrastructure that, that we would not necessarily be involved in. And uh, for this particular objective, remember, we were, I had that objective where we wanted to increase research innovation. If the, if the collection can show that it's really driving a whole research program into the future, then uh, that's the kind of collection that, that will help us to deliver on that um, desire to increase innovation in Australian research. So if that's the category, then we're interested. Um, uh, now, the kind of things that we're talking, remember I said, so that's, you know, and we will be interested for years to come. In this particular set of activities over the next little while, which are discovery activities, relatively short, uh, what are the kinds of things we're talking about? Well, uh, if you have an activity over the next two or three months that can show how you build or sustain a community, the community ownership of these, collections, then that's an activity that we'd be interested in uh, partnering with you on. Uh, the content strategy, so what we mean by that is if this is a longitudinal study, you know, what is the, the, the content of this collection that will help to drive research? Uh, for example, uh, standardization obviously makes that new collection that much more valuable if it can be hooked into Discipline standards, discipline standard concepts, um, technical standards that apply in, in, in your particular area, all these things are going to make your, this transformative collection that much more transformative. And then we're very interested in these ideas of sustainability. What are the, the key things there is how do you get long league institutions involved in them? So they're the, the, the areas of activity that um, are open for um, funding. Uh, what so what what are we expecting uh, out of you uh, if you apply for one of these projects? We want you to take a small valuable step. This is not an academic exercise. We want you to do something for a particular transformative collection. It could be, and here are some examples. These are examples only here that are, that are given. Uh, but you could do something in the next three months. You know, formalize a leadership for a group for a collection that doesn't yet exist or or exists, but hasn't been embedded in the community, you could perform an audit, do something with a standard, you could transform some data and aggregate it, add an access interface, define good practice for something which could be a distributed national collection, and we're open to all sorts of things and there's more details on the website around the, the types of examples of activity. Uh, so that's the first thing, you've got to do something. And it's got to be valuable. Um, it's got to be in those areas that we that we identified. Uh, you will have to share the learnings of those. So there'll be some kind of a report that, that will say, okay, given that you did something for that collection, what did we all learn about the issues, enablers? What kind of code did you use? Could that be reused by others? What methodology did you take about in order to do this? And can that be used by um, others in your area or? Um, or others in other areas doing similar things. And we'll ask you to present uh, at uh, a summit or other um, events. Uh, and that's the, the summit which is tentatively scheduled for September the 17th. All right. Uh, program two. So it's the second program of activity in, in this area, institutional role in the data commons. 
what are we trying to do here? The, the key thing we're looking at is how would you enable all these other research outputs, such as data, software, models, materials, how would you allow them to be captured and managed in a systematic way in order to, for that research integrity and reproducibility objective that we were talking about? And if you think about it, that's not a, a necessarily a, a centralized ARDC national infrastructure, but it is a national system. And that's where we believe that the institutions can play a critical role uh, in this national data system if we can somehow ensure the persistence of all these underpinnings of uh, the research conclusions. So that's a much broader kind of almost a safety net thing that we want to have in place that's part of a national system. It's potentially a little bit more than what a, a, an institution would do just as part of its business as usual in, in doing this immediate good project. Uh, it would be maintaining those materials, perhaps making them fairer, findable, accessible, interoperable, reusable uh, for the greater good of science and the research system uh, beyond the project. So they're the kind of areas where we, we're looking to see what is the role of, a, of an institution in, in this idea of data commons. The more pra pragmatically, what do we mean by that? Fundable areas here would include um, changes to data infrastructure policies and procedure that, that um, uh, support better research. Sensitive data is a, is a big challenge at the moment, so we've identified that as, a, as one of the key areas. It doesn't have to be sensitive data, but we've identified it there so that um, activities in that area can be prioritised. Um, and then this whole idea of how does, you know, how does an institution link into national discipline and other international systems. So what kind of deliverables there? Again, here, it's a three-part thing. We would like to see how you can demonstrate how your institution can go that extra mile and actually play a role in, in the data commons. So that's something potentially a little bit more than what uh, might be required just to do the research um, uh, and going an extra mile perhaps, you know, to make more data fair through changes to your policies, infrastructure or procedure improve the fairness of sensitive data um, or integrate into you know, national or global systems. We will ask you to share those learnings as in the other program and also to present at the, the same data summit in, in September 17th, which is a tentative date. All right. Uh, there's a particular note I just want to make about this second program. It's only the second program, the institutional role in the data commons. We've got some rules here. Uh, the eligibility is, uh, are, is only for higher education because it's an institution, you know, it's an institutional role. So we're talking about institutions. So uh, the way we're do, using the, to define that is the Higher Education Support Act. There's a, a list of uh, providers, uh, higher education providers, that's the list that we'll be using um, for institutions, uh, also those for uh, Commonwealth funded uh, research agencies. Um, there's another rule there that will take one project per institution. Part of what we're doing here, as I said, was to stimulate activity in the, across the sector to you know, really make this a system wide thing. So we'll be encouraging activity from uh, a broad range of uh, institutions, so um, we'll take one from each. Um, why? Again, remember the objective here where we are trying to explore what the foundational role of a long-lived institution can be in the persistence of these uh, uh, outputs of, of research uh, and also even back into the the first program, you know, what kind of a role do they have in some of these long lived collections as well? So, we really are actually trying to stimulate institutions, and so uh, that's what we're working on. But you should note the other program has no uh, such eligibility criteria, and nor do the other activity, pro the other discovery activity programs that I talked about earlier. All right, two more things you should just keep in mind. Uh, that 
the AIDC is uh, funded under the National Research Infrastructure Program. Uh, the chief scientist did a review and this is what he says uh, national research infrastructure is. It's these nationally significant assets, facilities and services that support leading edge research. So uh, if you want your sort of application to resonate with us, then you have to understand you know, who, uh, what box we're working in. Um, so, for example, in the first program around collections, you know, I could see how they would be nationally significant assets, uh, particularly if they're beyond the remit of any particular institution or, or where they go beyond, then the ARDC would see, yes, we do have a role there to support that kind of infrastructure. And then remember the second part, you know, and that's where I was getting to, why did we want collections that were specifically aimed at, at, at um, creating new types of research? Well, that's because as a research infrastructure program in, in NCRIS, and uh, we are required to support leading edge research. What does this mean for the um, institutional program? It's interesting. I think uh, ARDC is probably one of the most um, out there and interesting national infrastructures where we see the data commons as, as that this new nationally significant asset facility and service uh, that uh, will really help to support leading edge research. And it's a national system. So that's why we're stimulating activity in the institutions to see how they can um, support that. But you'll need to take into account that obviously if you propose something to us that looks like it's just uh, a change to your own institutional infrastructure for your own purposes, then you know, it won't resonate that highly with us. If you can show us how your institution is contributing to that national system, you know, by the examples I gave there was by making your data fair uh, and, and available to this uh, national system for integrity, reproducibility, innovation, etc. then you know, that will uh, align with uh, our very broad idea of this research data commons as a national infrastructure. One last note, um, so what? So what if we have you know, these leading edge research infrastructures? You know, why would Joe Bloggs be interested? Why would Joe Citizen be interested? Um, on the left here, this is another diagram from the National Infrastructure Roadmap. Um, on the left, you can see this cycle here, which is you know, really talking about how research infrastructure and research institutions and world-class universities and industry work together to make a really good research system. And that's what we've been talking about here, how to get better efficiency, integrity, and innovation into the research sector. And that's what the, all these arrows are about, making that really tick along very nicely. However, just having good research you know, in, when we're talking to the, to the public or to the government as a whole, that's not enough. We, have to, we do have to show how this research is translating and that's what this arrow here is translating out into uh, social, environmental and economic benefit for a uh, nation. And here are some examples, food security, improved health, longevity and well-being reduce carbon emissions, they're just examples. Um, so you will note that in one of the criteria we're looking at is, you know, can you explain to us how this research um, sort of translates over into those areas of um, social, environmental and economic impact? And again, why did we ask you that question? That's because uh, as an infrastructure program, that's what we're being asked by the, by the chief scientist and the Department of Education and um, the Australian government to explain to them how your fantastic transformative collection uh, transforms research and then has some kind of a broader impact. All right. Uh, so that's the kind of background. I'll just now go over the details of how you get involved and then we'll be starting the questions in um, probably just a few minutes. So if you start to think about your questions, now would be the time to note them. In that, uh, have a look in your go to webinar thing, you'll find a, a thing that says 
questions. All right, how would you get involved? Uh, here are the key steps. You need to read the background information. Uh, I've got the, I've, uh, we're sharing the, the slides here. I apologize, the slides, there's a lot of words on these slides and things, but that's because we want to share them out there and make sure that people know how to get to things. So anyway, first step, read the background. There's a link there where we've also got some frequently asked questions, which we'll be, we will be, which we will update over the next uh, month. So good to keep an eye on those. As we get a question, we're going to do this out in the open. So if you ask us a question, we may not get directly back to you. That's because we're publicly updating the FAQ and then we'll get back to you when we've updated that. So that uh, as a general rule, if anyone has got information from us, then everyone will get the same information. That's the way we're trying to um, run this call. So uh, that particular document and the FAQs and the website um, it's the way to get all the background. On the website as well, there's a, a, an application form uh, that you can get from that site there. So you have to fill out our particular application template. And then you, the third step, you need to submit it. And that's another part of our website where you go to uh, submit that. Most of that stuff is linked from this middle part here. That, that particular document would give you uh, links to most of these other things and uh, I'll list it at the end. But anyway, they're, they're your key steps uh, if you want to get involved. Um, in, uh, read the background information, ask us more questions, read the FAQs would be the, the stage we're at at the moment. Here are the dates, just to remind you of those. So the applications um, opened about 10 days ago. They'll close on the 1st of May. I apologize that there's Easter and school holidays, and, and now the civic duties of an election to, to fit in, in in that busy month of uh, April. Um, but they'll be closing there on the, the 1st of May. Um, look, we're not looking for a very detailed thing here, and we're not looking to negotiate with lots of people around this. If it's a good idea, we will take it on face value and try and get a contract very quickly. So we're looking for about two pages from you. It's not meant to be a very um, a detailed set of documentation. So we're hoping that a month, even a busy month like April, uh, will be good enough for you to provide that stuff. Uh, depending on how many, I said that it will be after the 15th of May, that's the target we're looking at. Um, if we get 200 applications, and it may well take us a little bit time to, to go through that. Uh, there is a panel, just to, to a little aside here, uh, uh, the ARDC is inviting about four or five people in each of the programs to help us to make a decision there. Um, so there'll be a panel where external people will be in the majority. There'll still be ARDC people there sort of, uh, sifting through and, and helping to make the decision. But the, the decisions will be informed by the sector. Um, so that, again, we need to get all those people together. So it may, may take some time into, into May. My rough thing is that hopefully by the end of May, you really will have uh, the surety to make, to know that you're on track there and you've got May, June, and, uh, sorry, June, July, and August to get on and do the work. Uh, we're closing at the beginning of September and we, we will want the uh, learnings and the presentation um, at that summit in September. All right. If you do have a, if you want to contact us about this, that's the email here on the left. Submissions at ARDC, and there's a number of ways for you to stay in touch there on the right. Please subscribe to the newsletter, and you'll get uh, updates uh, about this and other programs, and just you'll get more information about what we're doing. If you have our newsletter, you can follow the. Um, Twitter handle there, and we have um, that website, which is pretty much is where you'll find uh, the homepage for most of the materials that I talked about today. So that's the uh, background information, and uh, just to repeat then that this URL, uh, I don't know if you can see my cursor, but if you can't, on the right hand side, stay in touch, the very bottom link. 
there's a web page there and most of these other things, you know, the, the email address and, and the FAQ are linked from there. A little bit of a trick, uh, make sure you scroll all the way down. Um, we've had some feedback, there's a big blue thing that comes in the middle, don't stop there, you know, go right the way down. The, the, the link for the FAQ, um, the link for the download of the documents, they're, they're all, there's a whole set of stuff right down the bottom of that page. So. Um, so make sure you, you uh, the link for the FAQs is actually on the page, so keep scrolling until you find it. Thank you, and uh, we look forward to uh, working with you all in this uh, interesting program and, and beyond. <laughs>